As a dog owner, you probably know that your dog will try to eat anything within reach, and that just may include your houseplants. Today, we'll be learning if Monstera plant is toxic to dogs, what to do if they ingest it, and which houseplants are totally safe for your pup. So stick around and let's find out. Alternatively known as Swiss cheese plant, due to the holes in their leaves, Monstera plants make easy to care for houseplants. Originating in the tropical rainforests of South America, they quickly add a tropical vibe to any room. The downside is, these plants pose a health risk to pets, although a milder one than other popular house plants like oleanders. If you're watching this video, you may be worried that your dog could be in trouble after eating part of your Monstera plant, or you're simply curious about whether or not Monstera is safe to have in your home if you have pets. Either way, keep watching to find out why this plant may not be the best choice if you have pets. The reason Monstera makes for a less than ideal house plant for families with pets is primarily due to the plant's defense system calcium oxalate crystals. With the exception of the plant's ripened fruit, Monstera delicious, these crystals are found in every part of the plant, including the leaf and stem. Calcium oxalate crystals do form in different shapes, but the crystals found in Monstera are known as raphides, which look like bundles of needles. A painful defense mechanism, the needle-like raphides discourage hungry animals from eating the plant. When your dog bites a Monstera plant, the calcium oxalate crystals become embedded in their mouths. Depending on how much plant your dog ingested, the entire area around the mouth and the throat will become irritated. All variations of the Monstera plant contain this defense mechanism, and therefore do not make good houseplants if kept in chewing distance of your dog. It's also worth noting that the sap of Monstera can cause skin irritation in both dogs and humans. For this reason, it's always a good idea to wear gloves when handling Monstera. If possible, prevent your pets from getting near or rubbing up against the plant. Okay, so what do you do if your dog ate part of your Monstera plant? If your dog ingested Monstera, you might see them pouring at their face or whimpering, indicating discomfort. In addition to causing pain and irritation, Monstera can also cause diarrhea, vomiting, nausea, excess drooling, difficulty swallowing, choking and swelling of the mouth. The wide range of symptoms can be alarming and dangerous. If your dog's symptoms are extreme, which is possible, an emergency trip to the veterinarian is in your best interest. Your dog's age and size will likely be determining factors in how effectively their bodies process Monstera. The good news is that Monstera is generally not fatal for pets if ingested. However, it's still a good idea to keep a watchful eye for signs of any type of adverse reaction. You should also encourage your dog to drink water, which may relieve pain and wash out some of the calcium oxalate crystals. Though this will not fully alleviate their discomfort, and you should still seek professional care. Even if you think your dog didn't eat much of the plant and their reaction is non-life-threatening, there's nothing wrong with taking your dog to the vet as a precautionary measure. If your dog has taken an exploratory chomp out of your Monstera plant, it's unlikely they'll continue chewing the plant due to the pain caused by the oxalate crystals. The reaction will set in relatively quickly, at about 30 seconds, which means your dog will make the association and be quickly discouraged from taking another bite. Even so, it's still a good idea to move the plant out of reach, just to be on the safe side. At this point, you may be wondering can I have both a dog and a Monstera plant? To be blunt, keeping a Monstera plant in the same house with a dog can be a risk to the dog's health. That being said, there are some ways you can mitigate the risks if you'd like to keep your Monstera plant. If possible, the plant should be hung out of reach of a curious pup where it's unlikely to cause any harm. Just be sure to quickly pick up any leaves that drop from the plant. Treat your Monstera plant like you would any other toxic food or substance and keep your dog from having easy access to it. This will prevent any potential problems before they can occur. When it comes to dogs and Monstera plants, there tends to be some frequently asked questions beside the obvious. Once you know your dog is safe, you may be wondering about the health of your dog bitten plant. If your dog bites your Monstera plant, what will happen to the plant? Thankfully, Monstera is very tough and will probably be fine. It still may be a good idea to remove the damaged part of the plant since it may produce excess sap. Another popular question is whether or not Monstera causes kidney or bladder stones. Logically, you may think there's a connection between the calcium oxalate crystals and kidney or bladder stones. However, this is not the case. The calcium oxalate crystals that make up kidney stones are formed by the combination of calcium and oxalate, not the ingestion of the compound. If your dog has kidney or bladder stones, it's unlikely that this is due to the accidental ingestion of a Monstera plant. People also wonder if the Monstera plant is just another name for a philodendron, the split-leaf philodendron to be exact. Although these plants look similar, they are a different species. However, the philodendron does contain the same calcium oxalate crystals as the Monstera, posing the same toxic threat to your dog if ingested. So, which houseplants are perfectly safe for your dog if eaten? The good news is there are plenty of beautiful plants to fill your home with that are perfectly pet-friendly. Let's take a look at just a few of your options. Boston Fern 
The Boston fern has an outstanding reputation for being extremely lush, hearty and easy to grow, making it the perfect choice for many homes. Boston ferns will grow comfortably in a hanging basket or a lifted planter. They also fare very well outdoors, and most importantly, they're perfectly safe for your pets. African Violet This gorgeous flowering houseplant blooms after six to nine months and tends to grow outwards instead of tall. They aren't fragile and are non-toxic, which means they make a good choice if you live with pets or if you typically struggle to keep your plants alive. The African Violet looks beautiful in a window or as a centerpiece. Friendship Plant Friendship plants are a unique and non-toxic herb, making them an easy choice to add to your home. This plant's leaves are covered in intricate designs and have a fuzzy texture, growing in a quilted pattern. A tropical plant, it will require warm temperatures. Do not place this plant next to an air conditioner or drafty window in a cold environment. Polka dot plant. This plant is full of variety and color and is most commonly seen on windowsills. The polka dot plant loves bright light, but the leaves can crisp in direct sunlight, so you will have to be mindful of their placement. Don't let their vibrant colors fool you. They are non-toxic and totally safe for your pup if eaten. Venus flytrap. We're sure everyone is familiar with this plant. The Venus flytrap might just be the coolest house plant you can own. They are famously carnivorous, consuming small insects for nutrients. Despite their vicious reputation, they're totally safe for your pets. The only downside is that the Venus flytrap is insanely difficult to keep alive. They are tropical in origin and require highly particular living conditions in order to thrive. Banana plant. The tropical banana plant is sizable, easy to grow, and perfectly pet safe. Don't be fooled, this plant will start out small, but soon develop massive, firm leaves that bow downwards. A humid, warm environment is where these plants thrive, so be sure to give them plenty of sunlight in the warm months and keep them away from drafty places in the winter.